Okay, we wait. And yeah, Hi, we everybody. are live. We are live. Hello. Welcome, everybody, to this end of April edition of the Betty Freeman Booking Show. Um, I'm coming to you live from Vancouver, Washington, with three wonderful people to talk about video games. Um, this is an area that I'm not that familiar with, so I'm going to be learning a lot. And um, I'm looking forward to talking to each of these folks who have been gaming for a long time. So I'm going to ask you to each introduce yourselves to our audience and anyone who's watching, feel free to comment. We will watch and uh, bring in your questions and comments to the conversation as well. Chris G, let's start with you. Okay. Well, I'm Chris G or Chris Gregson, as people know, if they know my full name. And uh, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I, my day job, I work as a project manager for a software company, um, but uh, I've been uh, uh, making films and kind of on the sidelines of the, uh, the industry for, uh, for many, many years. So I work on passion projects and things like that. And I've been playing video games um, really since, you know, the old uh, NES Nintendo days. Um, and, and maybe a little bit before, but that's kind of where I really was like, wow, this is like a great medium and something fun, uh, to spend all my time with. And I've mostly been keeping up with the, uh, the gaming world. Uh, even to this day, I was playing on my PS4 and having a, having a blast. Awesome. Thank you. So nice to meet you, Justin. Let's hear from you. Hi, uh, this is Justin from uh, Brooklyn, and I work in the city working uh, for a nonprofit handling their social media accounts, and I have been playing games uh, also from the NES days pretty much nonstop since then, and pretty much play a little bit of everything, um, PS5, Switch, you name it. So yeah, that's me. Yay, Justin and Chris J. Hi, I am a Chris J. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Gosh, yeah. Uh, pretty much what everyone else said. I have been playing games since since the original Nintendo came out, uh, and I have not stopped playing games. Uh, right now, mostly on PC, uh, currently. But uh, yeah, uh, it is it is a long. Uh, I guess you could yes, it's just a long love with games that will probably never stop. And when I have kids, I will have them play games and we'll just continue for years and years. The fun never stops. Never uh, stops. Again, hi, Betsy. Chris J is uh, my business partner for our booking and event planning business. Um, I have played like Pac-Man and arcade games. I've played like Duck Hunt and Mario Brothers and, and a few of those things. And I used to play a lot of King's Quest when I was growing up here in this house, my grandfather's house, because he had all the King's Quest movies. But since then, I haven't really caught up. I don't play much except for like board games online. Um, Y'all wrote some wonderful questions to keep our conversation going. So we'll start with an easy one. We'll go back to Chris G first, um, which is actually could be quite in-depth. What makes a good game? Uh, wow, that is a loaded question. Um, I guess it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Um, what kind of game, you know, do you want to play like a, a bedazzled sort of game or like a side scroller or first person perspective? Um, but uh, I guess firstly, it needs to be fun. Um, it should be, uh, you know, addictive. And uh, there's that old saying like, uh, you know, uh, easy to, uh, to learn, but hard to master, something along those lines. Um, but uh, for me, when I'm playing um, games and I do a lot of like single player um, sort of action adventure sort of games, um, for me, the most important thing is like the feel of it. My, when I move my joystick, you know, do I feel like my character is touching the ground as they're moving along? You know, do I feel like they're actually part of the environment? And uh, if that doesn't happen, then I, I'll, I'll, it'll kind of like, you know, make me like not connect with the game as much and just not have as much fun if I don't feel like I have as much control as I think I should have. So, uh, so feel is you know, the most important thing for me. Graphics and everything, like, that's all, like, cherry on top, you know, sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, I got to be able to um, feel like I'm actually in the environment when I'm moving around. That's really interesting. I really like that answer. Justin, what do you think? What makes a good game? 
Uh, sure. I mean, I, I would definitely I, I um, add to that just because I, I agree with uh, Chris G feel and, and, you know, just having those mechanics nailed down, whatever the genre, whether it's, you know, running around or, you know, if it's a text based game and you're just clicking through menus and, and operating a user interface, whatever it is, you know, feel is definitely important. Then for me, the other piece of it is you could have either the simplest or the most uh, complex mechanics uh, that you can think of but you need to have a decent amount of variety um you know i think of i always point to mario as a great example of this where you know the core of the game is uh you can run and you can jump and there are different power-ups and different ways that you can build on your abilities but for the most part that's those are your core actions um that you can use in the game but then you know over the course of however many you know levels and however many hours they'll throw all sorts of different obstacles and so many different um things that you have to encounter and so for me the the worst feeling in the world is you're playing a game that you know can last 15 20 hours that you get to the 10 hour mark and you feel like you've seen everything the game's run out of tricks so you know, uh, not overstaying its welcome, really thinking through, well, what do we want to accomplish with this game? And, and sort of knowing how far to take that to me is, is a really critical question. That's so good. Yeah. Not running out of tricks. That's the same. Engaging all the way through 20 hours, 15 or 20 hours. Chris J, what makes a good game? Uh, I would say replayability i think is important um so that there are like enough in terms of just like stuff to do or um that the game is engaging enough that makes you want to like come back and play it again um i guess i was just thinking when when uh uh when you were asking uh with james and chris g that i was remembering when i played i think dragon age inquisition when that came out and uh, I was he, been huge into RPGs that then uh, I started playing it and I got through it. And then um, I think I was wanting to go back because I think there was like either an achievement or they had like um, a uh, what is what's called New Game Plus, which then like adds sort of like extra things um, that you don't see until you have beaten the game once. And I remember I started I started the game up and I'd already put in at least like 100 or 120 hours uh and i was like around the beginning and then i realized that then um i wasn't feeling i guess that interested in continuing because um the game itself was like really open and uh they set you on like this huge landscape and you could travel almost anywhere but then i realized that then like while the game was huge there wasn't a lot of stuff in it that you could really do. Um, so it felt a little empty. So I would say that, yeah, I think that like um, there should be enough, I think like content in the game that is interesting enough that really like draws the player in that makes you want to stay and play for however 40, 60, you know, however many hours. Um, Cause if not, then, I mean, I think if you start maybe put at least a good five, 10 and then just quit and maybe play something else that's more interesting. Um, so I think really, like hooking the player in probably like from like at least from maybe like the tutorial i think is important because if not then i mean they could just leave it refund you know and then just hop on you know some other game that's more interesting that's true well and i think there's maybe um you know the importance of story in the in the game like i think Everybody's different, you know, sort of with movies and video games. You know, why do you why do you get installed with one game or movie? You know, it doesn't have to have characters. Like I used to play Sim Tower and I thought it was fun because you can't do everything at once, you know, you have a goal. You cannot place the cathedral until you've, you know, done all of these other things successfully. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have a, um, a storyline per se, but I guess there has to be a certain amount of reward along the way. And I think that's very different for different people, what, what the reward 
in gaming really is. Um, so, okay, so we talked, you talked a little bit generally about that. I'm going to open up this to, you know, you can talk in detail about all the games you like if you want. This will be a free for all. We'll see who, and whoever is watching who's also into the same games can chime in and, and ask more questions to you if they want. Um, what's a game or gaming trend that you appreciate, even if it isn't necessarily for you? And take us. Take as long as you want. All right, we'll throw it to Justin first this time. Uh, sure. So uh, maybe calling it a trend is no, is. Are we okay? We uh yeah right, right right now yeah. Yeah, a little little chop, but we're 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 hearing you. Um, so, um, I would say uh, for for games that I sort of admire from a distance, it's often games that are more built around uh creativity and using the tools within a game to create you know essentially new games so i would point to something like uh minecraft which again it, that's been around for at this point probably over a decade now but even stuff like roblox which um you know you have a much younger player base and they're creating games from the ground up and you have stuff like dreams on the playstation um playstation 4 ps5 where people are literally, you know, you, you don't need to have any programming knowledge. You just go into the game with a couple analog sticks and you're molding, you know, it's almost like watching somebody build up pottery or, or, or clay structures where they're sort of creating environments. And I have always admired those games from a distance. Like they're all very, you don't need to know programming, but you still need to navigate some really complex interfaces. And so I, I just find those enormously intimidating. I think they're very, very cool. And I will often just sort of look at the end results and, and you know, see see what people have created after the fact. But in terms of like being able to get hands on and, and channel that creativity, I, I haven't been able to crack that yet. Yes, sometimes people's hobbies can be so. So complex, I wonder how they get anything else done in their life. Uh, Chris, do you want to take that one next? Trends and games? Uh, yeah, I'll just echo a little bit what Justin was saying too. Um, like, uh, as far as the um, uh, the creating sort of games, like Dreams you had mentioned, uh, which is fantastic. I dipped my toes a little bit into that, but. Um, you know, I can't spend as much time as I used to be able to spend, you know, in my youth or in like college where I'm, I can just get sucked into games for hours and hours and hours. I have to be more, you know, stringent with my time. So something like dreams, I'm like, this is amazing. And I wish I could spend all kinds of time in there. Like really, sometimes I just want to go in there and, you know, load up doom or something and like kill a bunch of demons and then, you know, go do my chores or whatever. Um, but uh, for me personally, um, uh, I, I love uh, single player, like I said before, action sort of games, exploratory games, things like that. And um, the, uh, the trend, I guess you could say, of these heavily uh, networked uh, multiplayer sort of games, um, that's great. I think it's awesome. It's not really like for me uh, when I've dove into those a little bit, I'm usually bombarded by people who've been you know, spending so much time and hours and into it. So immediately I'm like dead and I, you know, <laughs> kill level is nowhere near where everyone else is. And that that's a little frustrating. So I'm like, ah, eh, forget it. I like to go at my own pace and kind of explore things and sometimes try to break the game. I still have a little bit of that, um, that QA game, you know, uh, game tester sort of, you know, mind that wants to like figure out how to um, break the system. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's my answer. Uh, Chris, hey. I was going to say in reference to when you were saying that the multiplayer network, so like like Counter Strike, right? Stuff yeah, like, yeah, any of yeah, them. right. Where where the guy that kills you is probably like some like twelve year old boy mm -hmm. from like the UK <laughs> or something. It's just like oh my god. Uh, but yeah, like I've those ones like heavily PVP stuff that I've never been that strong with. Uh, most of the time, if I've done that. Well, sometimes it'd be a few of my friends that will like play against like some bots. Uh, and usually, yeah, if, if my friends are wanting to play like Call of Duty Warzone or something, they'll hop in with them, uh, which 
can be fun and um on occasion you know i i do get kills but most of the time yeah i'm, I'm not that good at that uh I, I i wish that i was better at that because uh i i i wouldn't mind winning you know a bunch of money for you know shooting a bunch of people so you know in a game like that 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 just sounds like that sounds fun or like or like maybe fighting games I'm, I'm okay at, uh, but I'm not enough to where I could go to like Evo and like compete on like with all like the high ranking players. Um, but those I was, I mean, I just enjoy watching them um, and seeing everyone just like at their best or uh, probably, I mean, another trend would probably be like MOBAs, which um, I had tried getting into a few years ago and I've tried a bunch of different ones uh and then realizing that <laughs> how uh how toxic those communities can really be and uh but i have had a friend that i keep saying that i'm gonna play with him and i i never find a right time because he said he's gonna teach me how to play uh i think he said overwatch and then he was gonna help me learn how to play i think dota um so because he has a group of friends so what is a moba so a MOBA, so MOBA is is a uh, a, oh, it's uh, I want to say it is a, it's oh, is it mass mm, massively online battle arena? I don't know if that's the, I don't know if M is that, but like it, it, it's an online game where you you choose like a character and you're in groups of I want to say it's groups of four. I think, or it's either four or five, I think. And then they put you on this map and you're competing against this team to basically, um, they, uh, you, you have to like destroy this, whatever the, like the main item is. And if you are the ones to like destroy it first, then your team wins. And there's like different classes for each like, uh, like character you choose. You have like a uh, different, I guess like a different sort of goal like everyone basically has like their own specific like goal uh or specific job and um like each character has like different abilities and you can buy like items to help like strengthen your character or help like strengthen your team and i think the the games last i i want to say at most maybe maybe like half an hour i think to like even maybe like 15 minutes um and yeah there's so many different mobas at this point but i mean the two most popular ones right now are league of legends and and dota 2 and i mean like they have it's crazy that at this point like um almost like when you're like racing nascar they have sponsors for some of the for a lot of these teams and like you're competing for like millions of dollars uh centered around a game which to me is just so crazy i'm just like yeah and i'm here playing some knights of the republic and i don't get to compete to win money for that but like i wish it so that is sort of something that i wish i could sort of be kind of a part of because that just sounds in my mind that just sounds so much fun um so but um yeah yeah i would i would say mostly like the pvp centered stuff like the player versus so players so what is pvp for those of us the the pvp is when as a player you're competing against another player instead oh, of okay. instead of pve which is player versus environment which should be just uh, uh okay. the player versus like the computer um so and that's that that's probably one of like the biggest trends i think especially especially online uh that that that's um that's probably one of the biggest uh and like yeah so that well, let me throw I'm in let, let me throw in one other one if you don't mind so what's the, yeah i was just gonna add another uh a trend but uh microtransactions I, oh, I, stay, gosh. I stay away from that from that business but uh i know that uh it's hated by everyone you have to like yeah tell us more about that my, my understanding is you got to like pay money to like upgrade your character so you can compete against others more competitively and then people are just like buying additional stuff after they bought the game it's crazy it's, yeah um that that is right there, there are 
um, you can either buy upgrades or you can buy um, like outfits for your character. Um, I mean, like in I'll say like in the game the 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 first person shooter game Counter Strike, uh, buying what's called skins, which is basically like buying different um, I, almost like different outfits for your gun. Like you can make your gun look like gold or whatever and uh, put like stickers on your gun and all that stuff uh which obviously doesn't do anything necessarily for you as like a player it doesn't make you stronger it just makes it, it makes your you know your, your, your items look cool and um yeah it's it's i mean that the, the, the microtransaction could be the microtransaction could be like a whole like video in itself because i mean the the controversy with that is just so insane at this point. Uh, and then, I mean, outside of now companies trying to do NFTs, which I just, I'm just like, it, it's, <laughs> it has gotten so ridiculous when like it used to be where you would just buy um, what, what is what's downloadable content, which is DLC. And that would, that would add like another level or another character or like something that would actually like, you know, have a real effect in the game to this point when now it's just like, um, yeah, where some games have have set up like a paywall where you can't progress in the story until you pay a certain amount of money, um, which, yeah, I mean, I, I do miss the days back when you would just get a game, you would pay whatever the amount, like the $6, and it would be the whole game. That, that There was no... That, that there was no downloadable content like i mean i if if we could <laughs> if, if we could get back to when you know we, we used to play stuff like ps2 or the older systems when you know you would rent the game but like all right that's it you'd finish it you'd return it get another game you, you wouldn't have to be like oh wait but you have to buy spend the extra 20 and buy this added part so that you could you know finish super mario like that would just be insane <laughs> <laughs> seems like that's something it seems like that's something that could be regulated more like i'm not saying that like the government should regulate it but like as a as a gaming community you could kind of step up and fight for just don't buy those games to, i i mean you know, i mean i don't know how much you're yeah, I mean, how much are you informed at the beginning, I guess? It's the only time it's really unfair is if you don't know the whole story until you've already gotten there and all of a sudden you can't go forward. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. Well, that, I mean, that is, that's the other piece of it is that there are, you know, I, I personally, I'm not as um, grumpy when it comes to, you know, I don't, I don't love it, but I understand games cost a lot of money in terms of budget and keeping them going. So like, if, if it's a, what you see is what you get kind of thing where it's like, here's the item that you're purchasing, you know, exactly what it is. Like I, I can live with that on principle, but where I take issue is a lot of these games, it, you know, and this is where regulation maybe would be not the worst thing is, you know, you have the blind boxes or the loot boxes where, you know, you're spending, you know, a dollar to get a box of random items. And in some cases, those items will enhance your character either cosmetically or within within the game, or it'll enhance another character that you don't use, or it'll be some random um, message or emotion, a gesture, like like all, or so, all sorts of uh, cosmetic things that have no bearing on, on what you're doing. And so, you know, I think a lot of people will look at that and walk away and say, I don't want any part of that. But then there's also a personality that will say, well, I didn't get my item that I was looking for in this box. But if I keep buying these boxes, eventually I'm going to get the, you know, something for the character I do use. And so there's just like this, especially in games, um, you know, I think this is more of an issue in the mobile market. But when you have games that are speaking to you know younger players and you know how many stories i think we all have the friend who's a parent who has a kid who was borrowing their cell phone and purchased a bunch of items that they didn't want to and yeah you can call apple or you can call you know whoever your provider is and and wiggle your way out of it but um i mean that, that alone is like evidence that something is is busted yeah, it's predatory. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. definitely. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. 
It is. I mean, the whole the, the nature of probably most things are for entertainment with the screen is the danger of addiction is very real. And the, the sort of management of your time, your attention, and your money towards things that are, you know, there's some chemical reward in spending your time on these things, you know, it, yeah, and for, for kids especially, you know, especially anyone who, you know, it's a, it's a visual medium primarily too. So, you know, we used to buy skins for our MP3 players on, you know, like, or you could buy money for, you could spend money on desktop backgrounds. I mean, there's no end of the things that could spend money on pixel wise that are just pixels and it's getting stranger and stranger as time goes on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really think the, um, it is harder and harder to cancel an account to um, any kind of software and it, but I won't, I won't start on that soapbox today. Um, That's a separate not, video. A not very well known video, video game you love. Uh, let's go back to Chris J first oh okay uh geez let's see uh yeah. i mean i mean like i i have played quite a few indie games um i will say that when i was in college uh my my roommate he was very good at finding a lot of freeware games online that we would we would play um there was this this one game that that a lot that all of us like we enjoy it was it was three of us and he found this um i want to say it's a i want to say it's german or it's swedish uh but it, it was basically this game where you're just like free falling and you have to just try and make it all the way down to the end and sort of like try to um like not basically not crash and they just have all these small holes and just um sort of try and uh, maneuver your way through that um so i mean that there there was a I'm trying to think what, what game that is not oh man um i've been so hooked on playing triple a games with my computer that i'm like what have i played that is not <laughs> that is not widely known already uh back to you yeah okay i, I mean i mean chris i mean chris g chris g yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've got one. I'm going to go back in time a little bit, um, uh, back to NES, because uh, that system had such a huge influence on me, like as a kid. And um, and I remember going to, uh, it was probably Kmart, and there was like a discount bin or something, and there were some Nintendo games in there. And I picked up this game called Journey to Celius, just because the art, the cover art looked cool, and that's how you picked out games, right? And I've actually got... Um, a working NES here in my uh, my playroom with a few um, games. So I have the original um, Journey to Celius game right here. Wow. And uh, it's it's awesome. It's so hard. It's like as hard as Mega Man. Um, and uh, the uh, the graphics are, I think, really good. Um, but uh, most of all, it's the music. I guess with this game, they developed some sort of new um, way of storing the music or something. They were able to like double the number of instruments or something like that. And the music rocks to this. It's so good. <laughs> and I've actually hunted down some uh, some metal bands that have covered the uh, the songs from the video game, uh, but they play it like metal style. And it's awesome. It's so cool. And uh, that's a game that I think not a lot of people uh, know about. Junior DeSilvio. Okay. Cool. It does make a big difference in music that you're listening to yeah. like, while you're playing. That makes a huge difference. Cool. Well, I'm going to look those up on, is that on Spotify. Can I look up the soundtrack? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You'll find it on YouTube for sure. Awesome. Justin, obscure video games. All right. Um, well, I think uh, Chris J alluded to it earlier, but I mean, you could throw... Uh, a dart at a like if you're talking about indie games like you know throw a dart in any direction and you'll find one that's gotten overlooked just because there are so many that um hit all the time and so 
Um, I've been playing a game called uh, Wander Song, which um, last year there was a game that came out from the same team called Chicory, which is its own uh, sort of like a coloring book adventure. And that game is wonderful, but I feel like that one at least ended up on a few like game of the year lists and everybody fell, you know, head over heels for it. But uh, Wander Song is uh, you play as a traveling bard who is just uh, going around the environment singing songs, trying to right wrongs in various uh, villages and towns and what have you. And there's there's a lot of things that it does that are just really striking. You know, first and foremost, the way it uses music, where um, I think when most people think of music games, they'll either think of something like Guitar Hero or Rock Band, or they'll think of something like uh, Parappa, which does have a narrative, but is much, you know, like, you have to get you know, you have to be very precise with your timing. And this is much less punitive. It's much more story driven. But um, every pretty much every ounce of music in that game is beautiful. It has a, a striking art style to go with it, too, where pretty much every screen is like a splash of all these bright colors. And the, the characters themselves almost look like they were constructed out of like construction paper, or like color forms pressed onto the screen. It's um, it's just it's just a very cool game. And Anytime your character sings, whatever environment you're in, um, you know, you'll always see sort of the the background elements sort of move and, and contort themselves, you know, depending on on the notes that you're hitting. So I definitely would recommend, uh, you know, there's a near, <laughs> it feels like an infinite number of, of indie games on the scene. So, you know, th that's definitely one I'd recommend, but I'm sure there are plenty of others. That sounds like fun. I, I'd be I'd be tempted to check that one out. Thank you, Chris. Did you, Chris J? Did you come up with some? I mean, I th I I think that uh, don't know how many people know about this game, but that there was uh, I'm just thinking about there's a game called Shell Shock Live, which is sort of like a Worms type game, but instead of Worms, it's just you're just it's just tanks. And that was a game that I had played with with my friend quite a bit on Steam. Um, and I mean, if, if anyone is familiar with the Worms game, then you know about like with like the power ups that you get uh, and how you're just always having to sort of just like uh, deal with like aim and trajectory. And it's just like a fun, pretty, you know, like simple game, you know, for two players. I think it's yeah, you can just like battle each other and it's like it's just like a funny you know easy game uh and you know like when when you don't want to you know use too much thought um but i mean i'm always attracted to like good like co-op games and uh so that's that's a good one i'd say to check out uh if you haven't uh already but i i think yeah, I, I I don't think that one is that widely known. So yeah, I, I think think that fits. I'm I'm literally scrolling through my Steam library and just out of my hundreds of games, like oh, which one is not that well known that I can use? Yeah, thank you. Well, thank no, that those are in contributions I'm not familiar with either. Sophia is watching. Um, she says that she's been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. She's listening to y'all. And she also says it sounds like Artful Escape, which I played earlier this year. And I'm not sure which one she's comparing Artful Escape to. But that, that the coloring book one, maybe? Or yeah. Maybe the, mm -hmm. that, sounds, that sounds a little like Wander Song that's been on, on my list. And I know that's on uh, Game Pass that we've... Uh, actually, I don't know if we've uh, alluded to it. That might have been pre-show, but um, oh, definitely yeah. worth tracking down. I really enjoy some of my, one of my friends in particular will do those like online coloring things and she'll post, you know, the, the final product. Um, I would rather mess around with paint in, in person, even though I very rarely do it because it is a lot neater and cleaner to have a machine in front of you. Um, so I should probably look into that a little bit. Um, Let's see, next one. Okay, what happenings, we talked about this a little bit, but I bet you all have more to say on this. What happenings within gaming and the industry inspire you and what bums you out? Justin? Uh, sure, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to start with the more positive side of things where I think the breadth and volume of games that are coming out um, from lots of different sources is really astounding. You know, I think, 
you know, we, I think we, we all highlighted that we grew up, um, with the NES as our introduction to gaming. And I remember being in the, you know, the toy store or later the electronics boutique, and you'd have like a wall of, let's say a hundred different cards with a hundred different covers of games. And it felt at the time, like, well, this is more than I could ever play. And it probably was, you know, for, for six-year-old Justin, but you know, now, you know, it's, it's both, you know, the ease Ease is the wrong word because it's actually it's enormously challenging to to make a game. But in terms of the number of platforms that you have to publish a game, in terms of the tools that you have available, I mean, you have teams of twenty now. You know, you have your uh, AAA teams that are you know comprised of thousands of people. But then you have something like Hades, which came out a couple of years ago and captured a lot of people's attention, and that was made by twenty people. You have games that are made by two or three people or, or sometimes even fewer than that. And so I think um, both, you know, d in terms of, 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 of the n number of games that are coming out, but also just in terms of the subject matter they're covering, you know, you have games, we covered the, the traveling bard, but you also like you have games where you can start a vineyard, you have you know, animal crossing where you're creating your own island, you have, um, you know, pretty much any topic that you can think of has been interpreted in some shape or form as a video game. And so it's it's really cool just seeing the lines of, you know, what genres exist and, and how those are blurred. It's that to me is inspiring. Um, I think what is a bummer to me is that the folks who will make games are often not treated with a lot of respect, both within their communities in terms of, you know, you have lots of vocal fans who are very supportive, and then you have some that are very vocally dismissive of, you know, the human toll of making games. And then, you know, if you're looking within the big studio system, you know, there have been a lot of stories like Nintendo, I'm the biggest Nintendo fan in the world, but, you know, they came under fire this week for sort of the treatment of their contract workers and, you know, the long, long hours and few, if any benefits, you know, extended through the, the contract, uh, contractor that they're working with. Um, or, you know, if you look at any game that has one of those staffs of a thousand people, you can pretty much assume that there's a fair amount of crunch where you have people working, you know, 80, 90 hours a week for weeks on end. And so, you know, I, I think there's a growing consciousness around this. There's a growing, you know, a little bit of a, a labor movement that's sort of swelling up. And I, I hope that sort of <laughs> uh, continues to evolve because uh, it definitely feels like it's needed right now. Yes, but I would say that across the entertainment industry with anything where people are kind of like, well, this is a competitive business. So therefore, you know, you should just be happy that we hired you in the first place. But like, hopefully that that mindset is continued, is continuing to be reformed. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, I think that, um, and I hope that y'all can hear me okay. I think that my internet issues will be some type. Of, um, you know, there's for the creators and artists, you know, that also have the expertise to program these games. I mean, the degree of skill is just astounding and not to mention the patience that it takes to build a game. Um, it's an astonishing, you know, we really should, if, if for no other reason, we should appreciate um, the art, the art and the patience that it takes to build the world. Uh, my friend Dave Nelly is watching, he says, you know, Lady Chronicles rule over large open worlds. I know not. <laughs> but thank you for watching, Dave. That's a good point, um, yeah. Chris, thoughts on gaming in the industry? Sorry, Chris, Chris J first, then Chris G. My bad. It's fine. Uh, okay, Ooh, let's see. So, yeah, so what is good is um, sort of what 
Justin said, because I was just thinking there's a game called, um, oh, shoot. I, I want to say core, but that doesn't sound right. That Because the, um, there was a... Um, it was it was a it was a team of like two animators, uh, and uh, it came out I want to say a few weeks ago. I wish I could remember the name of it though. But um, like graphically, it looked amazing because I guess with their anim their animation background, like they made it look really great. And um, it's 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 crazy what yeah what uh, especially small teams what they can what they can do is is mind blowing to me uh, where you don't really need a massive team to really put out a good game if if the if the small team themselves you know can do good work um, but yeah uh, so I'm I'm excited for um, uh, for what is going to come out with the new graphics engine with the, the the unreal engine 5 i think um because there was there was a demo that came well a tech demo that came out it was uh based around the matrix and it was only available on console um i don't know if they put it on pc yet but uh i mean just if you haven't watched it i'd say it's it's worth just checking out because it's like it the, the what what they can do with with the graphics is just it it blows my mind that we are that we are at this point like in gaming where things can just look even that more real is just it's crazy um there was a that there was another demo that someone did uh based around superman that that, that just dropped not too long ago which i did try to play uh and in my mind, I was like, I have like a, an RTX 3080, which is like a really, really strong graphics card. And then, and then when I, when I downloaded it and I was like, I'm just going to set it into, I think it's optimized mode, which, which is, I think, you know, using, I guess or, or it's, it's, it's setting the, like the demo to, I guess, like it's best settings, I think is what that means. And then I was playing it and it started to lag like crazy. I was like, this is crazy. I was like, I have the, you know, I have a strong computer and um, which makes me think that if that game were to come out, I'm like, D -d do I have to like still upgrade my computer to order to run this? Um, but from the video, I mean, it, it, it really, it really looks amazing. And I'm just remembering the days which I didn't play it, but if everyone isn't aware when they put out a game, it was Superman 64. And oh my God, like probably one of the worst games that, ha that have ever, that has ever come out. Uh, and I'm sure if, <laughs> if Superman were real and he were to see that, I'm sure he would be sad too, because, oh God, it was, it's just like the mechanics, everything about the game was just, was just bad. There was there was a thing about you having to, I think where Superman doesn't start with all of his powers. I think is how it went, and you had to like, you you had to like get his powers. I think throughout the game, uh, there was there was this part where you have to like fly through these rings, which didn't make any sense. Uh, and I mean, of course, the N sixty four at the time. I mean. Uh, I, I'm sure they were just trying to work with what they had, but still, like, for 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 as long as it's been since that game came out, and and probably I want to say that's probably one of the 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 most talked about, uh, and especially the 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 most desired out of anyone that likes superheroes that that we have wanted a Superman game for a very long time. Uh, that there have been rumors about companies working on a Superman game, and then they're like, no. Uh, so yeah, um, I would say what uh, sort of bums me out, which I think ties in with that, is how sometimes the companies will act like they're listening to the community, but they're really not when they're really listening to you know, like the um, the shareholders and the people that are paying them the money. Uh, because I mean, you could look at the company Ubisoft where we've wanted like a new like Splinter Cell game for ages. Uh, 
and which is uh, Splendor Cell is is like a where you play a sort of I guess I want to sort of like a like an espionage sort of like secret agent type of guy, uh, a lot of like stealth type game, and uh, when that game came out, that was a great series, and then you know it it ended, and uh, and people have wanted you know either like a remake or another like Splinter Cell game, which I think uh, they are finally working on, but like it's just like you could look at a lot of different companies where they will like tweet or they'll say like oh yes we do let, take in your feedback but then they'll put out something and they'll be like no one asked for this or they'll, they'll act like they're gonna put in these fixes or these patches and then it never happens but it, it, it it's it's funny just because like we're the ones buying the games and then they they always try to be receptive but then some companies i think then the day that that it really is more tied to you know the people that are actually like like the shareholders and people that are really like the investors where i think there is a little bit of that discrepancy which which is a shame because then you know us as gamers then we suffer then when we we're not ever able to like to get sort of the games that we want yeah super you're making superman cry nobody should ever make superman right cry. First G thoughts on the industry and gaming. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Justin pretty much said the same exact answers uh, that that I was going to give. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a bummer when there was so much uh, crunch time um, at studios and uh, developers and artists <clears throat> and testers, you know, coders. They're you know putting in so many like hours. And uh, probably not getting the benefits or the respect that they deserve, not being able to take, you know, breaks, spend time with their families. And then, you know, this, the, the game is released and it's a huge hit and it makes them billions of dollars, you know, and uh, meanwhile, those people have completely, you know, burned out. And uh, so that, that definitely bums me out. Um, so I hope that there are going to be, you know, changes. I know there's a little kind of talks about work reform and things like that. Um, so I, I hope that happens um and as far as inspiration yeah i mean the technology is is there now where things are so much more accessible um and the barriers to making your own game you know independently or with a small team have been just breaking down um so much that uh that it really is possible if you have like a great idea um you could you know make your own game and release it on on uh, on steam or something you know and uh that's really inspiring you know, uh, my uh, 10 year old self would have like kind of loved to, to have lived like in this time where I had all the, uh, you know, energy and creativity to come up with like game designs, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's really cool. I do too. Well, I love that there are so many new creative outlets that didn't exist before. Um, and sort of ties in with our next question, which is about how video games have evolved over the last 30 years. If you keep going back to NES, and that's kind of how all of this started out. We used to have a Sega Game Gear when I was a kid. Um, I'm trying to think of that. That was really the only game console sort of thing we ever had. You know, the hand, the handheld with the little, little tiny screen. Um, what are some other uh, developments in the in the last thirty years that you'd like to talk about? Who wants to take this one first? Hmm. Wait, you said in the last, you said that the last uh, oh, 30 God, years? Okay, so I'll say, I mean, I think it's crazy. I know we talked about this a little bit just this year. I think Chris J mentioned this, the, the sheer realism. 30 years, right? Since we were all children. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the sheer realism, when you think about it, for anybody who's under 30 or, or doesn't remember that well, I mean, you didn't have computer game music that sounded like actual music. 
um, you didn't have, you know, now you can have a, a soundtrack that sounds like an actual thunderstorm. We have actual recorded voices, human voices as part of our video game soundtrack. That's not how things operated when we were younger. You had this very computerized sound, this very computerized sounding music. So for me, that's it, because I'm a musician, and actually I think all of you are, are really musically inclined. I mean, that definitely makes a big difference in whether I can stand to sit and listen to something and play something for an extended period of time, and whether I'm really in that world. Um, and then of course, not to mention the graphics, the graphic capability for something that was very pixelated like Chris's Pac-Man um, compared to now. Is there anything else that you want to talk about or should we skip this question since we sort of already touched on some of that stuff? Uh, I'll just mention, I think that- right, maybe... Let's go on. Oh. What is the future? What is the future of gaming for good or for ill? Justin, why don't you go first? Okay, sorry. Um, well, I'll-, I'll answer this briefly and then I'll, I'll toss it to, to Chris G. But um, in terms of the future, I mean, I think we, we've we alluded to Steam, Game Pass. I, you know, I, I wonder, you know, the you see the consolidation that's happening with um, TV and movies where you have, you know, the streaming wars and you have all these platforms and they're, they're pulling in as much media as they can, as they can. And it's all centralized in like a handful of places. And that feels like where we're for better or for worse. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it just yet, but it feels like, you know, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, you know, all the, the major console players, they have their own sort of subscription services now, and they're all sort of evolving in, in real time. And, you know, you have Epic game store and you have steam on the PC side of things. And so, you know, my big concern going forward is just, um, I don't want these games to be treated solely as a commodity. Like they're, they're definitely something that we all feel very passionate about. And I, I feel like when you, when you just have a million different titles on a list, it, you risk the, uh, you know, you do risk a little bit of like devaluing them in some ways. So, you know, that's, that's sort of like a flag for me, but um, other than that, I don't know. I am terrible at predicting the future. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think uh, like, you know, graphically and, and uh, just immersive wise, we're, we're approaching like a movie studio quality, you know, like uh, images and sound and, I imagine we're going to hit like a plateau at some point where we, we just can't do anything else um, that's more spectacular. And, you know, um, for us, you know, when we had like NESs and then the Super Nintendo came out, like our minds were constantly being blown. Um, but nowadays, I feel like our minds are less, being blown less and less um, because we're reaching that plateau. So for me, I think it's going to be um, the future is more like narrative, um, you know, games you know, stories that, um, games that actually have like real stories and, you know, character arcs and things like that. Um, you know, like uh, I mentioned The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2, like that's kind of where I see um, games sort of evolving more where the line is being blurred between, you know, it's a game versus like a movie, but it's like an interactive movie, you know? I mean, I, I would say that I do have this weird pipe dream of wishing that, our games could get to a point where there's uh there's this anime called Sword Art Online, if 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 uh where it's a um this I guess this this MMO and what it is is that you uh, like the person puts on like this headset and then like they're sort of transported like literally it looks like their like mind is transported into this world where like it's fully realized and you're like walking around in this town and all that stuff. Uh, so in my mind, I see that and it's like, yeah, you know, that'd be really cool. Uh, probably not in our lifetime um, if technology ever gets that far. Uh, but I think when, yeah, when I think, you know, games can feel so immersive where 
you can no longer tell between like what is a cut scene and what is the gameplay. Um, and I mean, with a lot of games, how they don't do loading screens anymore, because that used, I mean, when that used to be a thing and how you, we used to complain, but like, my God, I'm waiting five minutes for this game to start, you know, and just like you're sitting there, nothing's happening. Uh, where now it's just they've, a lot of games, they've cut that out. Uh, and so because I think developers then not trying to put any sort of like distractions to sort of uh, pull you out of the experience. Uh, which is sort of funny because I just saw a video, was it yesterday, where I don't know if it's Sony that's looking to add put ads into their games. And I was mm -hmm. like, really? <laughs> I was like, what is the point of that? Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I would think the whole point is, you know, you, you want to keep the player engaged. So, I mean, if I'm walking around and then seeing an ad for Pepsi, I don't really see how that, like, how that has any connection to uh, whatever this, I don't know, this FPS first person shooter game that I'm playing. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I, I think I want to say that maybe uh, VR stuff that, that maybe that, that, uh, I think is still, I think that that is still developing and that I think still has uh, some more time to go to get up to the point where we are with like the console games um, graphically probably and, and just um, also, I mean, because I know I've played it a little bit, but I know uh, there is that issue with, you know, you playing VR and then people start to, start to either feel nauseous or they'll get headaches from playing that too long and so that i think is not at the point where you can play as long as you would on the console that you're not putting in like 100 hours on a vr uh so yeah i i, I think that if that probably could get up to the point of where we are with our console and pc games then i think that that might maybe be the future of games at least with that uh system Yeah, but those are good points. I mean, I, I don't know when we'll have 3D printed cities someday, probably that we'll be walking around in. Um, I mean, I hope that the future of gaming is always, you know, communal and, you know, maybe more localized. I mean, I sort of see it as, you know, we've had this huge boom with TV content and TV streaming and production of shows. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing this week that Netflix stocks crashing because it's like we fragmented the market, you know, so far that, you know, no two people are ever watching the same TV show, it seems like. I mean, it really hasn't gone that far. But, but you know, it's interesting because I'm aware with so many different social media options, so many different games options, so many TV and movie options, you know, is everyone going to feel more isolated because they're just not sharing the experience like you would have when you only had, you know, three TV channels to choose from. Um, so, you know, to me, you know, if you only have two eyeballs, we've all been at this for 30 years. Be careful, keep it in balance. I hope the future of gaming is and always with people, you know, that people just don't isolate themselves and that, and that, you know, they keep finding games that challenge them, you know, and that are fun or a fun escape that they don't become your whole world. Um, Anybody else want to talk about the future of gaming a little more before we go on to the last couple questions, which is about like getting into the world of gaming if you just want to start. Okay. If you are new to gaming, because we've only got a couple minutes left, 
What is your advice to someone who wants to start getting into gaming into 2020, in 2022 if you've never watched video games before? And also thank you to Millie who said that we all have great voices for voiceover. And one wants you can put you can get in touch with any of us if you want to hire us for voiceover or ask us to voice the character. That would be fun. Um, <laughs> And then what are some good entry level video games for people who don't play? Who wants to take that question first? Uh, I'll pitch uh, Inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys have played that? Yeah. I think yeah. That's, that's a great game, as you already know. Um, what impresses me most about that... Oh, technology has spoiled me. <laughs> I, I've, uh, I've taken inside and, and uh, given it to a friend who, uh, who doesn't play video games at all. So it was like kind of their first video game almost to play. And what I love about inside is how it very gradually um, tells you how to play the game and you kind of figure it out on your own, but it gives you one thing at a time to do like, Hey, you come across a little log. Guess you have to press this button to jump over it. Okay, great. And then now you come over to this other rock that you have to climb, like uh, just the way that it dispenses how to actually use the controller. Um, and then it just kind of layers those skills on top of each other. Uh, I think it's just like brilliantly uh, designed in that way. So, so I recommend Inside as a good entry level game. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And, and P.S. I am very sorry, everyone watching and all my guests for their weird tech delays. I'm not sure what that's about. Chris, J, do you have some recommendations for new? Uh, I mean, I, I, like what just popped in my head right now is because I, I very much love uh, co-op games. So I play a lot of those. Always looking for new co-op games that I would recommend uh, if you can grab a friend and play It Takes Two. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think just everything from just the mechanics to, I mean, the story that it's, it's set up well to uh, really, you know, teach you. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> God, that game. And, 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 and what, just a few things. Just what was crazy is that how it almost feels like when you, um, like when you land in like each, I guess world that there's there's like different types of games sort of merged together into one game, um, and like it, it sort of evolves as you keep going. Um, so yeah, th just the the it everything about it was just so well done, and I mean I I, I just think that that is something that probably everyone should play, um, and I mean it it. it it also really teaches you, you know, about teamwork because I mean, you're having to help each other to get through. Uh, and I mean, there's also, the, there's even some PVP in it too, because like the, there's the mini games in there uh, that are really cool, really easy. And just, um, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about it. So yeah, I, I would highly recommend if they've never played any game, I think they, that they should definitely jump on that. If you can have someone to play with you. Awesome. Thanks for that. Justin. Uh, sure. So I would I, definitely, so I, I would point to, you know, first, if, if you're looking at it from like a, a premium price point, um, like I would take a look at Nintendo stuff just because, you know, Animal Crossing, which came up earlier, Mario, Breath of the Wild, Kirby, like, I feel like all of those games are sort of designed to be, um, you know, the, what Chris G was talking about, sort of like that idea of layering on mechanics gradually, and they're, they're usually good entry points into gaming. But I also think, you know, there's there's always a little bit of a barrier to entry when, when getting into games, because whether it's, you know, a, a console that costs, you know, as little as $200, as much as five or $600, or a, a PC, like there's always going to be that upfront cost. But after that, you know, look into different services, or, you know, Game Pass or just keeping an eye on sales. You know, I think yeah, there's this misconception that gaming is, you know, is inherently expensive. I think it definitely can be expensive, but you can also find a game that you can pick up for $20 that'll rest you the last of the, you know, the, it'll last you the rest of the year. So I think, you know, I, I think talk to friends, 
play what your friends are playing. You know, I think sometimes that's a great way of, you know, not just not just in co-op, but, you know, even just having conversations about games, I think, can sometimes be enough to sort of spur you to keep going if you're getting a little frustrated. So um, that would be my advice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is such a great panel. It's so great to hear from you all. I hope that you will pitch me some future topics and the same for anyone watching if you'd like to come on the show and talk about gaming or anything else in the future, let me know. And uh, thanks again. I will see you all next week. All right. Now let Chris, yeah. let, let Chris J take us offline. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you so Cheers. much. Cheers. Right, thank, thank you. you.